Okay, yeah. this is a photo taken back in the early 20s, early 1920s. I uh, got this from Laguna Beach Historical Society. This shows uh, the historical configuration of the estuary, that is the evacuation point of the Aliso Creek watershed. As you can see, this is taken during the summer. The people are all down here bathing. This is not a winter, this is a summer photo. And as you can see, there was a viable estuary here. You can also see how by the channelization, meaning the downcutting, with what the county and county flood did here, is narrowed or constricted this throat. So the back parking lot was this area, but it was moved over. Obviously a parking lot, obviously a parking lot created here with rocks. You can see some of them exposed. This was all brought in back in the early 70s to create this parking lot to protect this side. So this is an excellent example of what a real California estuary looks like uh, midsummer. We also feel that this is proof that there was flowing water and also the potential for indigenous species, many of them now either extinct or endangered like the steelhead trout. Near the bottom, which is called the benthic, the bottom water obviously is extremely cloudy. There's a lot of pollutants and contaminants, especially hydrocarbons that are very dark in color, obviously. And those things are all washed down the Aliso Creek watershed and come out here and they settle at this creek mouth. Uh, the, the greenery and as we go upstream you'll see algae growths. Those are what's known uh, a result of eutrophication. Eutrophication is a long word meaning there are way too many nutrients like uh, uh, things you like fertilizers and things are building up. They're washing down and they actually provide sustenance and, and actually make these algae blooms much more uh, uh, advanced and they obviously increase in number. Obviously we see some people on the beach out here standing yeah, in the mouth. Are they in trouble? Are they in health trouble? Yes they are. One of our standing complaints with this area is there's a few signs posted but uh, never is anyone down here to tell these people to get the hell out of this water. This is urban runoff predominantly. We figure approximately three-fourths of the water right here is urban runoff and it is in fact a health. Now you see a mom taking her little child out there to walk around in it. If you, I can tell you what is the most dangerous condition, those with underdeveloped immunity systems like children, those with compromise like uh, for instance, someone with AIDS or something, or the elderly whose immunity system is breaking down. And if you have a cut, an open cut, these are classic areas to get things like Staphylococcus, which is a flesh-eating bacteria many people have heard of. It can literally eat its way through your body in a couple of days. So there's about five trillion reasons why this water is extremely hazardous. Uh, Michael Hazard and I have continually uh, demanded that this beach actually, especially this creek area, be closed. People should be restrained from going into this water. And now you see a mom taking her child down there to play in it. And, and one of the things also that's egregious about it is they've replaced the old 5 foot by 3 foot warning sign with a 12 by 14 inch sign. They do not actively keep children out of these waters. Once again, it's probably one of the most polluted creeks in Southern California overall. The that's the, only, that's the only thing keeping people between death and safety. Is that. This is a uh, this is a uh, kind of a small pocket park and and parking area created by the county when Aliso Creek Beach was developed uh, by the county by Orange County Harbors Beaches and Parks about 35 40 years ago. And once again, this actually encroaches encroaches in to the historical floodplain and estuary of this creek mouth. An estuary is the mixing zone of salt and fresh water, and there are some species that only live within that zone. So one of the critical things for people to understand is that an estuary is a very unique, complex, complex ecosystem, the mixture of salt and fresh water, and it has to have certain elements in place for it to in fact be a successful ecosystem in a healthy and thriving one. When they restricted this, what they did too is by narrowing, and you have the picture of the bridge there tells you the story, where formerly hundreds of millions of gallons during a peak rainy event would come down and disperse itself over this flood area and estuary, you now have a tiny little portion trying to handle hundreds of millions of gallons a day. Uh, this bridge was actually topped in 1969 by an El Nino and they had to close this whole beach and area because water literally came so high, Luke, it was higher than us, it was at the top of the bridge.
and it wasn't that close. And, and just to once again go ahead and highlight what Roger said about there are species that live right here in the tidal zone. Uh, the endangered tidewater goby. This is one of the last refuges of the tidewater goby is right here at Liso Creek. It was declared a critical habitat. The fish that many, many people are seeing fishing here and they think that that means it's a viable, healthy living stream. That's That too is false and once again that's due to ignorance. Carp are like low oxygen species. They can practically live in a post-nuclear condition. They are not high oxygen demand fish. And the irony is, is that they're really not a marker of a healthy ecosystem. If anything, their preponderance or their population numbers indicate they're probably the only uh, fish species that can live in this kind of environment. Because things like the steelhead and other species, trout need a high oxygen content to survive. Exactly. They, the, the trout, the steelhead trout, are the canaries in the coal mine. When you have steelhead trout that can come back and live in a creek, that just shows the viability of life in the creek. And once they start disappearing and the other fish species disappear and you only have carp left, you've got big troubles. The others trailing behind. What do you got? Females and babies, I would guess. Cockroaches of the creek right the there. Cockroaches of the creek. You like that? You like this kind of sound bites, huh? I know. Those are pretty good. God, it reeks out here. It's beautiful, but it's... Well, that was another one of Mike's little, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Matt Coker's quotes, creeks that reek, and this one definitely <laughs> reeks. There's another building that shouldn't be here. South Coast Water District has a facility and parking lot here. I don't know what those assholes were thinking, but they should have never been allowed to build down here either. Over the years, because of the chronic flooding here and the damage caused, can you see these wood pilings? Uh, this resort came in. Now, I should mention this was not part of the city of Laguna at the time. This resort had to come in and for their own protection, they like put these pilings in place, these wood pilings, just like these, these rail, like railroad ties you see. They would come and slam some railroad ties in and pour a bunch of concrete to keep the creek from, you know what I mean, incurring into the resort. So they made many, many, many attempts to hold back the creek. And this concrete structure is a sewage outfall. Yes. Oh, what you're seeing there, right. You see that thing looks like a walkway? Underneath that, it comes from the waste treatment plant and dumps off the Lisa Creek Beach. Yeah, and this is an area that they, the montage is wanting to go ahead and restore back to natural beauty while denying that steelhead are here. So as of now, they have no plans to help the steelhead return to this area. And as John Monsieur has quoted in today's Laguna Beach Independent, it's an extremely rare fish and they have no plans to, uh, to deal with it because see over there, they were losing it. Those are called buckle straps uh, in the train. Also, uh, where the water is yes, this is a, this is a true mixing zone. It's flowing down and it's stopping and it's turning around. On right, itself, right there. because the incursion of the salt water is meeting the fresh water coming downstream. Looks like it has a different dorsal system, but. Oh God, so it's going good. in. You guys have. No offense, but you have no idea how gross that really is. Well, he was telling me about all the sores he got from. Oh yeah, and I almost died here in the headwaters of this creek. And you do know, like I said, there are carcinogenic substances. There are known carcinogens in this creek. And he's going in barefoot. Oh. There it is. I can see which one. It... What was it doing? I know. Sun on its side. It was. It's, it's dying. Oh. Was it a steelhead? Well, you're right now. Went over there and it's laying on its. It's white. It's white on one side. steelhead would do. A steelhead will not stick around and look at you. It will go ahead and take off. I'll be, oh man, that'll be too bad. These guys would flip out if we found it. Boy, especially if we found it, that would be like, look we'll on that. Man, that is not, that is not. Well, once again, take a look at the bottom of that. That's the largest steelhead ever taken in Orange County. And the bottom is white. The, those carp in there have dark bottoms. But I'm not going to chase that fish around that way. I mean, as I said, you wouldn't catch me swimming at Aliso Creek. I don't even want beach. to stand near you right now. Oh, no. <laughs>